Live All Good Podcast listeners, I cannot believe it. This is the final episode of Cruising with the Coaches for 2021. Well, coming up next, we take a deep dive into what forgiveness looks like, what it feels like, and is there anything that you should or should not forgive? All those things in this episode, the last one of 2021, coming up next. Hey folks, Live All Good podcast listeners, how you doing out there? Hope everyone who celebrates Christmas had a great Christmas. Uh, this is Cruising with the Coaches, a conversation with Julian Lee. I am here with the Christmas queen, my co-host. <laughs> <laughs> Julie, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. I cannot believe this is our last episode of 2021. I know. Heading into year two, year two. I man, where did it go? You know? I don't know. It's crazy. But uh, but yeah, folks, this is our last episode of 2021. So hopefully everybody's kind of looking forward. I, I know there's some craziness still going on in the world. <laughs> I know there is, and that's okay. But I, I do wish everybody is, is hopefully looking forward to a 2022 because, sure we are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you know, there's like when the, the calendar changes, it's like the, there's a fresh start, you know, it's, like, it's almost like when you're looking at the clock, right? Mm -hmm. And the clock hits a new hour. Okay, cool. I'll start at the top of the hour, start the next hour, you know, mm -hmm. fresh start. So um, I, I think what, is a good place to really leave 2021 is talking about a, a topic that can be controversial, <laughs> mm -hmm. but something that I think is important. And that topic is forgiveness. And I know the listeners are like, whoa, all right, Lee. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, Lee, what are you doing, what man? You, you know? About? You've talked about traffic. You've had rants. Okay, I promise no more traffic rants. I promise I haven't eaten any food delivered that's not mine anymore, you know. That's, but um, so I, I, I was reading this article in Psychology Today because I was in this, um, I'm in this mastermind group that we were talking about forgiveness. And so I was reading the reference that he was using, okay? Um. But before I get to that article, though, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts, just a general thought about or around forgiveness? Well, as I was, uh, as we were chatting about it earlier. Sure, um, sure. I would say that forgiveness to me mm -hmm. is not about the other person. It's about you letting go of whatever feelings may be behind whatever action that may have put you in that place that you no longer want to be so now mm -hmm. you're forgiving the situation like the whether it was your fault their fault or you know like you're not mm -hmm. fault in it you're mm -hmm. just letting go of what it is that happened mm -hmm. and are moving forward I, I think, that, are you sure you didn't read the article yet? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that's empowering for the, for the individual. Themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and see, you make a great point because forgiveness is about the individual. Mm -hmm. It's about you. It's about your choice. Mm -hmm. And it's about you empowering yourself and taking the power back from either the offender or the situation, whatever it was, that's what you're doing. Because once you take the power back, you get to move forward. Right. You don't get to stay stuck with thinking about what happened or, or ignoring what happened, but you are able to forgive and then maybe address it to move on, to move forward, mm -hmm. you know? 
Uh, so let me, I want to read this from the article. Um, it starts with what forgiveness is and literally you were right on the hat. You hit the nail right on the head. So it says forgiveness is the release of resentment or anger. Forgiveness does not mean reconciliation. One does not have to return to the same relationship or, <clears throat> or accept the same harmful behaviors from an offender. That is a crucial point that I think we should kind of touch on, right? Mm -hmm. I think so many times when people probably think about forgiveness, you know, what, what's the old saying that we used to hear? Forgive and forget, right? Forgive right. and forget. Right. Well, I, I'm not sure that that's really accurate. Because forgiving, sure, as we now have said, that's releasing the resentment or anger, hurt, whatever it is, so you can move on. Yeah. I think that forgive and forget part, so the forget sounds like it was related to this reconciliation, mm -hmm. right? Almost like if you forget what happened, you can then reconcile with whoever did it so that you can be friends again, you can be, you know, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's really clear to point out to our listeners, you do not need to reconcile with someone that you are going to forgive. Mm -hmm. You do not need to do that. Reconciling would be for them. Forgiving is about you. And that's what we want to offer you, right? right? Forgiving is about you. And I think it goes back to where you, the word that you said that stuck with me mm -hmm. is the word stuck. <laughs> I think that's where people get stuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sure. You can't keep forgiving the same action over and over and over again uh -huh. when it obviously behavior isn't going to change. Uh -huh. And, uh -huh. you know, you can forgive yourself for accepting it. Absolutely. For however many times that you accepted it, uh -huh. you don't have to keep doing it. That's right. You know, you can move on because you're not stuck. Nobody's stuck in a situation mm -hmm. like that. You're right. You, you, yeah, you don't accept the situation. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, let's, let's even dive in a little further. Reconciliation or, or forgiveness is not about the reconciliation. It's not about accepting. It's not about acting as if something didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, it is simply a way for you to release the anger or hurt or frustration, whatever is blocking you from moving forward when you think about a person or situation, right? right. It's for you to step forward. I, I think also um, <clears throat> there's a, a part of this article that talks about um, is it always do is there always good to forgive and one part of it and folks you can find this article in, in psychology today if you were to google search psychology today um slash forgiveness or something like that it, it comes up so these these things are in this article but one important thing i want people to know is that um like it, it talked about maybe like sexual abuse right and is it okay or should you forgive for that kind of offense? And what this article mentions is that there are times, such as sexual abuse, where it's okay not to forgive. Because in that situation, it is more empowering for the victim to not forgive that person. Right. So that's okay. We're, we don't want you to think that, oh, you just start uh, telling everybody, oh yeah, what you did was fine. No, it's not what we're saying. Mm -hmm. But forgiveness is letting yourself become empowered, taking the power back from that situation 
so that you can go on and move forward, even with setting boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. Like you mentioned, you can't keep forgiving the same behavior and same action over and over. It's okay to set a boundary after you have done the forgiveness, you know? Right, right. Man, that's, that is crucial. But the, the main point that we want our listeners to really come away with is reconciliation and forgiveness are two distinct and separate things. They are. They are. You, do, you do not have to reconcile. They do not go hand in hand. No. <laughs> and they shouldn't. No, and they shouldn't. they shouldn't. You you shouldn't be made to if you know what if if you feel like you are being made to reconcile after you've forgiven somebody, that should be an immediate red flag that that is a boundary that's like three feet. <laughs> right, right. Because no one should be made to feel like that. You know? I mean, it goes back to what you were saying earlier. It's all about energy. Mm-hmm. And if your energy is being wasted, then, you know, if you come to a place where now your energy is restored, but now you're revisiting the same place where you were wasting energy, then mm-hmm. what did you just do what you did for? <laughs> exactly. What was the point of it? Exactly. And it's just like, you know, the other piece to that is, you know, um, you, with forgiveness, it obviously it takes two people. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's three people. Sometimes it's four. Sometimes it's ten. It depends <laughs> on if it's a family matter. You know what I mean? Because you, you sure. have family. I mean, as we're coming into, you know, the new year, you have mm-hmm. things that may have happened over the holidays that you know, you, I don't know what it could have been. You know, somebody didn't have the holiday at their house and they were planning on having it and mm. now they can't have it and what ha- I mean or somebody ate your cheesecake and it was not cool <laughs> sorry just, just, you know realizing that while there may be re- you know reconciliation on the part of others toward you know whatever the individual the situation sure. whatever it was somebody might still have residual feelings about it mm. and that mm. is that person's prerogative you know, that's right. And if they're not ready to be where everybody else is, then you need to let them be. Exactly. It is their. You you said it's their right. It's their prerogative. It's their right. It's their. Prerogative. They they do not have to reconcile just because everybody else did. <laughs> and I think that's you know you you make a good point because I think with families right, mm-hmm. I think the the accepted thought is that oh because we're family we have to reconcile (laughs) 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 nope i I think that was accurate i think that was accurate (laughs) yeah just just because in and we're talking blood family we're talking chosen family anything right Mm -hmm. You, because forgiveness is such an individual thing, it is. that reconciliation may never come, and that's okay. Yep. Yep. You should not be pressured into that, you know? Exactly. Uh, I wanted to uh, look at some other things uh, in, in this article. Um, so do you think there are any acts that are unforgivable for me as an individual i would say you know it would depend it, it depends it, it depends it, it, not even that it depends honestly mm-hmm. I, I i can't even i can't even begin to understand um how it is to walk in the shoes of a person who is in the court and they are forgiving the person who killed their loved one. Like I I'm with can't you. even begin to, to imagine mm-hmm. imagine what that is like. You know. Yeah. So I would I would want to say that um, my heart is big enough to forgive anybody for anything that they may do, because mm-hmm. if it were me who needed forgiveness. I would want that, you know, others to feel that they could forgive me, you know, mm-hmm. I, would, I would, I would, 
I, I don't know. I always try to keep my heart as open as possible. Sure. So, um, yeah, I, you know, don't tell my kids this, but <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think there's anything that is unforgivable. I just, yeah. I just don't, I don't. I well, don't I'm, I'm with you on that type of instance, right? I cannot imagine, and, and the article talks about that. I can't imagine being in the courtroom and you've had a loved one person. I would like to think that at some point I could reach that forgiveness mm -hmm. for the offender I really do because what are we talking about people right the forgiveness is an individual thing so so in order for forgiveness to be real right for it to be true like at some point I would like to think I could forgive that person mm -hmm. Because every time you think about either the loved one, right, or if you think about the, the offender, you're going to have residual anger <laughs> and you're going to have residual feelings about it. And it will find a way to, what's the word I'm looking for? Permeate. Mm -hmm. it, will, it will find a way to permeate every aspect of your life before you even know it, right. you know? Right. And, and it will even manifest itself if, if this resentment and anger that you think you have gotten rid of, right. if it goes unchecked or unforgiven, if you will, right. you know? Right. So th that's why that's so important. Um, and, and, and the article does mention exactly what we're talking about. It says there are no acts that are unforgivable but that it's every person's right to decide if they want to forgive. Right. And that's what we're talking about. Right. It's everyone's right, you know? Um, I wanted to, to dive in a little bit about why it's important to forgive. What we were just kind of talking about, right? Yeah. Because it's so, because it's so individual, it, again, your body if you're in a constant state of stress, your body does not differentiate between mental stress, physical stress, emotional stress. It does not. Mm -mm. And so if there has been a situation that you think you have truly forgiven, but you haven't, it's going to be stored somewhere. Right. Okay. It's going to be like and, pumped up energy. Mm -hmm. Like you, we were talking about before, when you mm -hmm. hear their name, when someone mentions something that that person did or something like that. And then, then you're just like, oh, like, absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. not at that place. And that's and if your body over a period of time, if it continues to be in a state of stress, um, not only I know a couple of weeks ago, our episode was talking about like food, right? And eating. Well, if your body's in a constant state of stress, number one, the way the digestive system works, it will not be optimal for you. So then number two, your body will be releasing the chemicals cortisol and adrenaline. And over time, those things help you to gain more weight which puts you at more risk for lifestyle diseases. And the stress will then manifest itself in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, if, if you're not buying what we're selling, so to speak, <laughs> about forgiveness. What we're selling for free, is that good? <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> selling it for free, we're giving it away. Selling it for free, if you're not buying it, folks, that those are facts. Yeah. That's that I'm not making that up. Those are factual things that happen. And if you if you don't believe me, think about whatever's going on in your own life. Think about someone that has done something to you. What emotion comes up when you think about that person and what they did? If you still have some kind of yeah or oh yeah. You know, if it's any kind of negative reaction, guess what? You haven't really forgiven that person. 
I just want to say it doesn't <clears throat> even have to necessarily be a negative response. It could just be as uh, some folks like to say, it makes you feel shook. <laughs> it, it gives you something, you know. So sure. I, I'll sure. give you an example. Sure. Um, you know, I myself raised by a single mom until I was about four. Then she, you know, got married and what have you. But I never mm-hmm. knew my father. Mm-hmm. I, never, I did not know my real father. Mm-hmm. My, let's say my biological father. Sure. And so, um, as you know, a teenager, and a, a young adult, and what have you, it would be like scenes in movies with a father and daughter or you know like mm-hmm. things like that would make me be so emotional and like it was like ridiculously sure emotional, like, crying about it or what have you and, mm-hmm. i mean uh, oh, it was just a good movie it was just such a good movie and, <laughs> and it's like well no there's something there what what is that what very is that? true and so you know because i'm just the way that i am just the way i'm wired i because you're awesome what what's that no no not at all i'm just a human being it's just you know like i had to figure out what what was what was wrong like what was that what was making me feel that way yeah and so then you know come to realize and it wasn't to say that my you know my dad because i don't call him my stepdad Mm -hmm. my mom married ken um he is the only father i've ever known Mm -hmm. he is my dad but it didn't close a void you know what i'm saying? correct there's still a void there so then mm-hmm. it was also like that weird time where i didn't know how to feel about it mm-hmm. so um having n- never talked to this man mm-hmm. never set my eyes on this man i had to forgive him for what happened mm-hmm. because first of all i wasn't there i don't know what happened you know mm-hmm. and so i I had to go to a dark place first before mm-hmm. I realized that there was, because then he ended up passing away. Mm. So then there was never going to be closure. Right. And so then recognizing that, you know, I can't go back and change things, they mm-hmm. are what they are. I had to just forgive the situation and move forward with no feelings about it at all like Mm -hmm. so like now um you know like i'll watch a movie or whatever that and i'm not as emotional about it because i have bonded with my children in a way that i know that that will never be us Mm -hmm. so that was my form of forgiveness well even is as far as and and thank you for such a, a personal share because even as far as talking about it now on this podcast, mm-hmm. there's no way that you could have come that far without having truly forgiven him for the situation. Exactly. That, that is a prime example of, you know, that's, you're not saying it was okay. No. You're not saying it was a good thing. Right. But what you're saying was you had to, go through all those stages some of it probably a little bit of grief i mean well that's that's a whole nother podcast for another day (laughs) but all these different stages and then get to the forgiveness so that you could move forward in your life right and you wouldn't have been able to do that the way you have without having gone through that Exactly. exactly so I appreciate you actually sharing that with our listeners because I'm sure we we both know you're not the only person who has that situation. Absolutely <laughs> not. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sure there's other people out there who can relate to something very similar, you know, and they may even be sitting there now saying, wow, is she talking about what I'm going to, you know? Mm-hmm. So that also offers that bit of hope and yes i was correct you are awesome (laughs) but (laughs) but folks if like if if you weren't paying attention like yeah that's how that's how forgiveness works Mm -hmm. you know if you hadn't done that you'd still be stuck somewhere Mm -hmm. in life and not knowing what that 
grip was that was keeping you there. Right. You know? Right. right. Amazing. Amazing. That's why like forgiveness folks is, is so important. It, uh, it's, it's cathartic, I guess, mm -hmm. in a way it, it, that's what it does. It releases those things. It releases you from the bondage of your own anchor. <laughs> it, 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 it really does. It does. Um, you know, so, so let, let's take a quick break because what I want to talk about, like we've talked about forgiving other people, right? And how that looks and what reconciliation is or isn't. <laughs> mm -hmm. But why don't we take a break and then talk about forgiveness of self? Why don't we dive into that when we come back? All right? Yep. All right, folks, stay with us. Uh, uh, we'll be right back. life coach and founder of Live All Good Coaching. I'll be on the air with Podcast Business News Network talking about the various things around health and wellness and mental health. Also talking about how mindset is critical to achieving the goals that you set for yourself. You can reach me at liveallgood, the number 44, at gmail.com or you can go to my website liveallgood.com and fill out the contact form and reach me there. Once again, that's liveallgood.com. Go to the about section, fill out the contact form, or you can reach me at liveallgood, the number 44, at gmail.com. All right, folks, welcome back from that break. If you uh, missed the first segment, this is Cruising with the Coaches, a conversation with Julian Lee. We have been talking about forgiveness, um, especially with moving into 2022, right? We're a few days away. And we've really talked about that first segment, about what it's like with forgiving others, right? And I think takeaway from that first segment, not only is forgiveness a, a personal thing, but we want to make sure you understand forgiveness and reconciliation are different. <laughs> you, do, you do not need to reconcile with the person you're forgiving. You do not. Um, but I think what we, what we really want to talk about now, right? Again, it's, it's, it's typically easier to forgive other people if easy is a word, right? Just like it is, oh yeah, you know, I can tell somebody this, I can do this. How is it to forgive yourself? That's the hard part, right? Because um, Julie, I'm not sure about you, but I know I am my own worst critic. <laughs> <laughs> I know I am, I am hardest on myself more than anybody, you know? And there's, there are probably standards that I hold for myself that are probably unreal and unattainable. Mm -hmm. And because of that, that makes it hard to live up to. And so, you know, I got to, I've worked on it a lot, by the way, folks. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to forgive yourself, right? Yeah. Because there's no one who's perfect. There's no such thing as perfect, but you got to be realistic. So, so I want to dive into that a little bit, what it's like to forgive yourself. Yeah. Uh, back to the article we were talking about from psychology today. This is one of the things that it mentions about forgiving yourself. Um, it's, it's so they say forgiving another person is one thing. But when it happens that we're the ones that are the offenders, right? When we commit the offense, what's important is to take responsibility for your mistakes, but the intense guilt and shame are not productive outcomes in the long run, right? 
So even if you take responsibility and you admit your mistake, you have to work through letting go of the guilt and the shame from having committed that mistake. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it also says here that the process of self-forgiveness can be a painful challenge, but it's valuable, deeply valuable. The key to the process is owning up to the mistake, understanding why it occurred, and then helping to rectify the situation. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, it, I, I, I mean, that's it, right? It is definitely a, a painful challenge. It can be because no one wants to, it, it's almost like having to admit you are wrong. That's a hard thing to do, mm -hmm. right? And we, and, and, and by forgiving yourself, we're not just talking about the egregious mistakes that people see, right? Or, or things we were talking about before, you're in a courtroom, then we're not talking about that kind of stuff. This is stuff that, you know, the small things, right? Mm -hmm. If you unintentionally hurt someone's feelings deeply, right, by you know, something you said or something you did, not including them when they thought they were at a certain place and they're not, you know, in your life. I don't know. But own up to whatever, if, if something's brought to your attention, first of all, right? And if it's unintentional, I think forgiving yourself for not knowing is a good thing. You know, you have to be able to say, hey, I'm, I'm sorry. How can I help make this better? Or how can I, how can, what, what actions can I take so that I don't repeat this mistake? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I think those are important things to help rectify the situation, you know? Uh, I also think that let's let's travel down this road for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. Let's travel down this road. Let's let's just say that you did something intentionally. Mm. Let's say it was intentional because there's something that you, you know triggered you. And so like little kids, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody gets their feelings hurt. So what's the thing that they want to do? They want to hurt that person's feelings, right? Okay. It's, it's tit for tat, right? You know, they, they want to go back and forth. So let's say. So what did you do on purpose? <laughs> <laughs> We're not naming names. <laughs> what did you do on purpose? Well, nothing yet. Nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 i'm just saying it could happen it could happen <laughs> but if you did something on purpose right if you did something intentionally to hurt someone because you were hurt mm -hmm. right if you did that if you did that what forgiving yourself is about is owning it, owning it, which means you got to dive in and acknowledge that you were hurt. You got to acknowledge that you were hurt. Uh, okay, okay. So I feel like we're beating around the bush here. Okay, so okay. Like, so what would you intentionally do to someone to hurt them because they hurt you? Um, I mean, there's multiple situations. So, so I'm let's. Gonna, I'm gonna oh, go, I, 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 you're I, gonna go first. Yeah, you got one because okay. I got one too. Go ahead, I'm you first. Saying, <laughs> what comes to mind to me? Sure, sure. Because I think probably eighty-five percent, and I think that's low. Eighty-five <laughs> percent of people do this. Uh huh. I don't understand it. Sure. I will play the game. Okay. All right. Let's go for it. The 
freaking silent treatment. <laughs> Don't know what it is. Don't know why it happened. But I will play the game. We will have a standoff. Okay? So, like... How do you, how do you work through that? How do you okay. work through that? Yeah. Well, um, I'm, I'm sure that you would win that game. <laughs> I don't know that ever. So. There you go. There you go. No, but, but so here's how you work through that, right? And I, and I think that's a good example because I is the, it. It, yo, I agree. I, agree. I, I, like, what is I have done it too. I've done it too, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. You want to play that? Guess what? I'm not going to say anything. Right. I've okay. done it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> So at some point, what you want to think about is, is the silent treatment serving your purpose? And if it is, ask yourself, how? How is the silent treatment serving your purpose, right? Mm -hmm. Because what you're doing is you were giving the silent treatment either whether you started it or it's reciprocal Mm -hmm. because something happened that hurt your feelings, Mm -hmm. period, right? Let's just be fair, right? Something happened, whether the person, whether you did it intentionally, whether the other person did intentionally, something happened. So instead of doing an action that is not productive, or serving your purpose, try actually acknowledging the real thing. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge the emotion. Acknowledge with an I statement. You know, break the silence and say, hey, you know what? I got my feelings hurt because you said this about my cooking. I do not feel like cooking anymore because that makes me feel X when you said that. That is a great place to start because now you are owning the action or the mistake of the silent treatment that did not serve the purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's take that a step further. If the person that you are making these statements to wants to continue with the silent treatment, uh, uh. it's it's okay, right? Let them do that because what is forgiveness about? Forgiveness is internal. Mm-hmm. So by you making those I statements, that is your beginning path to forgiveness. Mm-hmm. You've already forgiven yourself for taking the silent treatment route, Mm -hmm. you've made the I statement. So, excuse me, you've empowered yourself. It's no longer about them. Right. If they want to keep playing that game, let them play it. Yep. But you took a step in the right direction for what we're talking about. Okay. And then you can now forgive yourself for being triggered or hurt because maybe somewhere in your past, when you learned to cook, mm-hmm. right? Maybe somebody said something back then mm-hmm. and it was never addressed or dealt with. And you carried that all the way till now. Mm-hmm. And so the other person made some sarcastic comment, and triggered back to when you were. <laughs> It <laughs> took you all, all the way. Don't taste right. <laughs> exactly. 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 So forgive yourself for not addressing it then at 14. Mm-hmm. That's okay. You didn't have the tools. That's cool. Right. But now you do. Yeah. Now you do. So that's the kind of intentional things mm-hmm. that people do, right? It happens all the time. You know, people, you know what? I heard a meme the other day, or was it uh, Reddit? I don't know, but on social media. One of the, and I probably heard it. (laughs) 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 
Probably all three. Probably all three. <laughs> so it went like something like this. Let me see if I can get it right. People can only communicate to the level of, oh, shoot. People can only communicate to the level of their self-awareness. People can only love to the level of their self-love. And people can only, for, I think it was forgive, to the level of, their, of, of how well they dealt with their trauma, their internal trauma. I was so that's literally what we're talking about here, right? If if someone is not working on forgiveness, whether it's of someone else or yourself, think about that, right? Mm -hmm. So that way, if you put if you look at a person as a whole person, then you start to understand, wait a minute, that wasn't really about me they are communicating in a way that they're capable of Correct. because that's their level of self-awareness. They're, they're loving in a way or lack thereof because that's their level of self-love. Mm -hmm. And they're behaving, that's what it is. They're behaving in a way that is about how they've dealt with their trauma or not. And I think that's very powerful because it's hard to understand the level of someone else's capacity. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we always go by what we know is ourselves. Okay. Mm -hmm. And of course you've got people who, you know, oh my gosh, you can count on them for anything. And they, they're like machines. Absolutely. You know, you know I, I know I can, there's certain people who I can call right now. They would answer the phone immediately. Mm -hmm. you know, but I also know people who I can call for days and they'll never answer, you know, mm -hmm. there's just understanding, you know, that everybody is not like you. Nobody is it, to get to a place where we could actually celebrate each other's uniqueness is where I wish everybody could be you know i love it i i, I always and i always i'm always referring to my kids but <laughs> they're so funny because well you treat so-and-so this way now you treat so well because because they're different they're different hello mm -hmm. like I, I can't i i can't teach you all the same i i just mm -hmm. can't you guys have shown me different things in your behavior that will allow you to have more responsibility and more more privileges. I mean, Absolutely. Your life, you know? now, now, where you treat them the same is housing, mm -hmm. you know, shelter, you all live, you live <laughs> food, on the same roof. Yep. and clothing. Like that, that's, that's all the same. But you're so right. They have different personalities, mm -hmm. different characteristics. Yeah. You can't, it's not one size fits all. But I love what you said. Be celebrated. Mm -hmm. You know? Yep. Absolutely, man. But also just getting to that place, though, where you were talking about earlier about, you know, capacity mm -hmm. and understanding that you you may never get that person to be at the level that you're at. That you're at. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. okay. You know, yeah. that's, where, that's where the whole avenue of acceptance comes into mm -hmm. play. You either settle with that or you walk away. I mean, like, those are your choices. I was, yes, and I'm glad you said that because I was going to add, yeah, once, once you understand, you may not ever get, like, you can't make somebody get to a level. Mm -hmm. They have to do it for themselves. On their own. And like you said, you have a choice. If you want to accept that, then you accept them as a whole, right? right. Flaws and all. Mm -hmm. Or if that does not work for you, you have to walk away. You have to walk away. Yeah. <laughs> because what you can't, what you don't get to do, which how many people do it, they will choose to stay, but then they either grow bitter mm -hmm. and resentful because this person it's not changing or they will 
spend all this energy trying to change someone else. Mm -hmm. And neither one works. (laughs) Neither option works. And so, yeah, man, Mm self-forgiveness, you know? And and I know we took a little tangent with the the meme I was talking about, but how true is that, right? Forgive, I think that's uh, bringing it back full circle. Also forgive yourself for sometimes not looking at someone as a whole person, Mm -hmm. (laughs) not understanding we all are at different levels and maybe, you know, they haven't done the amount of self-work that you have done. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they're trying, maybe there are different signs that they're working on it, but forgive yourself for being judgmental if you will, because we all do it, Mm -hmm. even though as coaches, we're not, but we do. (laughs) (laughs) We're real people too, you know, but yeah, forgive yourself, you know, and, and I think that is the message of our episode today, right? Mm -hmm. We're, we're wrapping up 2021 and we're moving into new beginnings, new chapters, fresh start 2022 well, let that baggage go, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, we're not saying like you, like you can't really wipe the slate clean, right? Like nothing happened. No, Things happened. What we're saying is you don't have to carry what burdened you in 21 mm-hmm. into 22. Absolutely. Or you don't have to carry what burdened you in 2015 <laughs> to 2022, That's you true. know? Like, it's okay. Like, forgive yourself for whatever it is that happened, or if there's someone that you else, that someone else that you need to forgive. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Like, so you uh, uh, before we go, I think this article also has. Uh, you know what? I'll try to post it with the episode okay. because it also has tips, okay. like the four. I think there's like four tips on how to forgive someone or how to forgive yourself, like what those things look like, you know? Um, but in the interest of time, folks, like we, we really, I think we really, what was what's the one? Mm-hmm. Um, let's see here. Uh, actually, you know what? I can read all, I think I can read all four of them okay. real fast. So the first tip is to uncover your anger by exploring how you've either avoided or addressed the emotion. Mm -hmm. Now we talked about that. (laughs) That's right. That's right. We mentioned that. This is important. The second step is actually making the decision to forgive. That's the second step because you've already acknowledged that you've either been ignoring or coping with something and it hasn't worked. So by choosing to forgive, that allows you a path forward, Mm -hmm. okay? The third step is cultivating forgiveness by developing compassion, whether it's for the offender or for yourself, right? Because a lot of times I think people forget to be kind and and compassionate to themselves, right? Mm -hmm. And then finally, it says, release the harmful emotions and reflect on how you've grown from the experience with the act of forgiveness, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I, I still will try to post the link with the, with the episode as well. Mm-hmm. Um, there's one thing I do want to say about forgiveness. This is what uh, we've gotten from the, I've gotten from the mastermind group too, that um, you really know that you've forgiven somebody when those emotions don't trigger you anymore. You know, when the person's name is mentioned or when the situation comes up, when you're not triggered, when you can talk about it, not saying you have to be happy and go lucky about it. No, (laughs) but but you have to be able to. Yeah. Yeah their name rolls off your tongue and you have absolutely no feelings about it. That's it. That's when you know you're not triggered anymore and it's, and you've forgiven them. Or you have the ability to keep the name out of your mouth completely. 
date you. Now, <laughs> now would that be another way of avoiding and well, ignoring? But... On how volatile. That <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's very See, true. That was the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, folks, it's man, we have we have thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, so you know what, just to give you a time frame, we have been doing cruising with the coaches for six months. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. it's been six months, you guys. We, you know, I, 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 I probably shouldn't speak for you, Julie, but I, I think we, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> But I, I, we really do appreciate you guys uh, listening every every other Wednesday. We appreciate you taking some time out because we appreciate sharing and being with you guys. We really do. So yeah, man, this is this has been another episode of Cruising with the Coaches, a conversation with Julian Lee, and you can find us on Apple, Google, Spotify, Amazon, some other other platforms but just know that as we move into 2022 folks be kind to yourself forgive yourself and find a way find a path to move forward it's a new start absolutely all right you guys well the next episode you hear from us it will be the new year so everybody be safe Try to have some fun. Do whatever it is you're going to do within reason for the new year. (laughs) And we will see you guys or talk to you guys again in 2022.